and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and um, here we are with a, another madcap episode of messing around on the railway and um, yeah so I've had a little bit of a think of uh, where to cite that uh, signal box um, originally it was here but I think it'll look a hundred percent better over there uh, and another reason for putting it over there is the signalman can see what's coming around the corner from this direction without uh, the obstruction of the water tower and the maintenance office there. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be a lot better to put it there. But the only trouble is... Um, when I put the um, scenery down here, this is rock hard polyfiller, so I'm going to have to hack that out, but not all of it, uh, just about 60 mil a meter, millimeters away from this sleepers. So, yeah, there's that's not too bad of a job to do. Uh, at the same time, I will add this point, uh, which means uh, taking out the section of track from this joint here all the way back through to here where I've already pre-cut it so that will have to come out a uh, new point and a new piece of track fitted in and at the same time I will take this corner piece out and put in a 100mm wider piece to come from the edge of here all the way back to here so that gives us a little bit of a more width on this board um, it's probably better to do it now before I start work over there because even when that board's in I can still reach or cross to do the work on the brewery um, yeah, so that is the cutting plan for this week. Um, this video may take a little bit longer because there's a lot more involved um, with what I have to do. Um, removing the track, cutting away the, the uh, not embankment, but cutting away this piece of scenery. I've already sliced it with a saw there and there so I've just got to run the saw down there and then hack all this out um, I might be able to use some of them pieces again I don't know but that's the plan for this week uh, it'd be great to do that reconnect the track back up into the um, MPD so there's a lot of work and um, I've got to get cracking so now I'm, I'm removing the track that I don't want. I want to salvage this and I want to salvage the point as well. So I'm just getting a pair of pliers and twisting the rails away from the cut that I've made there. And if I do the same at the other end, where the point is here, if I do the same there with a pair of pliers, I should be able to salvage the point that's next to it without damaging it. So I'll do the same here. Just twist away and it should pull the rail out of the um, connectors without damaging them here. So that there is ready to receive the new point. So when removing these sleepers what I've done is I've pre-soaked them um, and it's pretty damp and it just makes it easy for to remove any track work and ballast all the way up to where I've cut it, it off here at the rails so that was quite easy and the ballast is still a bit damp and uh, it just makes it easy if you ban uh, damp dampen the ballast first so I've just got to cut the joint here at this where the sleepers 
still are attached to the original track work back here. As you can see we've got a massive problem with moles. Moles and their holes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, as you can see I've had to drill lots of holes um, because this polyfiller is rock hard um, because it's got PVA wood glue in it. Um, yeah, because I remember doing that. So, a series of holes, and hopefully, I could just use a chisel now and just pick it, pick, pick all this out. And um, then we get back to the baseboard, and we've got a nice flat surface to sit the signal box on. Right, so for the last half an hour, I've been working like a navvy trying to cut this round back just by using hammers and chisels so I know how hard it is now being a, a navvy um, yeah this this polyfiller has got uh, all sorts in it I, I remember I was mixing up anything I could find it's just to <laughs> make up the, the polyfiller that I needed for this this area when I first did it because you can see ballast in there uh, where I recycled the the ballast when I redid one of the uh, track works. So yes, yeah, so I've learnt my lesson here. Remind me not to use PVA and wood filler because it is rock hard. Um, I need at least 25 mil from the rail here to the edge of the signal box to give clearance for. Um, rolling stock and etc so I think I may have it now so all I've got to do now is just paint these white edges up in a dark brown make sure the baseboard is nice and clean and I'm ready for mounting the signal box onto it so still a little bit more to clean up now just want to round these corners over to make it look more natural like I haven't drilled into it there you go. That's the life of working on a railway. Right, as you can see, we've just laid the concrete for the um, ceiling box to sit on. Um, yeah, so it, we've made some pretty good progress uh, this afternoon. Um, as you can see, we've painted all the um, area that's been cut away, and uh, now it's ready to have the greenery reinstalled um, back on this edge that we've took away. Um, other things have happened is we've got rid of the small triangular board that was there and, uh, and we've extended it out by another eight inches um, from this point here, this edge, right away through to this corner here. So that gives us uh, enough room hopefully for another siding and maybe some um, buildings for future works and um, we've removed the double slip that was in there so that's uh, ready for uh, some new point work so once that's in we'll be able to reconnect the line back to more or less as it was but with a new turnout um, so yeah, so we're moving on quite well at the moment and uh, that'll look pretty good when it's sat on there, the signal box. So I'm just going to put some cobblestones in here, put back the ballast and um, yeah, then we'll be good to go. Right, so here we are, it's Sunday evening and we've moved on quite a bit. Um, with regarding putting uh, this section of track back in. Um, I didn't put that on video, um, wiring up a electrofog point because I've done that so many times um, and I don't think, if, if you are interested I will leave a link up to um, wiring up a point at the end of the video. Um, so Yes, so this bit of track was salvaged from the MPD when I've just pulled up um, 
that track work. So what I'm doing now is I'm filling in the gaps between the rails here uh, put by putting some sleepers in. Now what I tend to do here is, if I just quickly show you, is the sleepers have these chairs on. So I just get a blade and just cut them chairs off and just go a little bit below the sleeper so that when you put this back under the rail the depth that you leave I'll just show you that little bit there that you leave will go underneath the, the joiners the rail joiners and, uh, and it won't push the track back up so that's what I'm doing now before we move on to the, the next section of track work so I'm just cutting those chairs right out of the sleepers you can keep them chairs by the way and put them on a pallet now I've done that over at the Time Dock MPD put some of these chairs, kept them, put them on a pallet they are little tiny chairs but they're if you, if you don't break them, the ones that you don't break, they are worth keeping So now once this is done, you just cut how many sleepers you want. Now a gap that width there, they probably need two sleepers. So I'll just cut off the plastic tabs and see if we can feed that underneath the two rails. And then we just leave that in place and uh, it just looks as if the sleepers continue. But what I tend to do is before I ballast is I'll pull that out and pop in a little bit of Yoohoo glue and then that will hold that in place. Uh, here we just probably just need one so I'll just put that one in there so I just thought I'd show you this um, sometimes I don't show this in videos but uh, I think I'll, I'll do it now show you it now. Alright that's it we filled the gaps now we'll bring the track into the MPD and this is where we're going to reconnect the track coming away from Tyne Dock as you can see I've got a, a medium right hand turn out there um, obviously I've filled in the holes where the uh, double slip was and then we'll have another medium turn out which will finish just about here uh, with the right hand turnout coming along here creating a side end which will finish just roughly where this pencil is so there's the connection there so we'll start from there I'll follow this pencil line round and then into the turnout here so yeah that's the cutting plan so far um, when I, obviously when I come to sand that polyfiller. Um, I'm going to have to cover these locomotives up with a dust sheet or something. So yeah, it's all work in progress. God, it's that windy outside. It's blowing that tree over. It's Monday evening, and I've been up here a couple hours now, and uh, we've got an overhead view of the progress regarding the track work. Uh, as you can see we've got two right hand turnouts there which takes the place of the double slip and uh, on the right hand side we now have a new siding which hopefully will hold between two to three locomotives depending on the size of the locomotives. And then we rejoin the new house or the time dock line and uh, if we keep going around we'll see the redundant siding so that kind of fits in with what's going on because there's the siding there which finishes and uh, yeah so it's a fair bit of work done tonight um, hopefully tomorrow evening we'll get it all wired up and uh, maybe see some trains running on the new track work 
if I just bring you down to eye level you can see the progress so if we start from there past the water tower the office and then reconnect back to the town dog line right so we have a little bit of space here on the baseboard it's not very big but it's probably big enough to put a, a, a canteen or something for the engine drivers or something like that so it's possible uh, build for the future we're moving through this week really really quickly now we're, we're on to Tuesday evening and I'm up here for a couple of hours so I'm hoping to fit all the dropper wires so I can um, electrify this section that here that we've put in um, last night um, I no longer solder the cable directly to the fish plates anymore I don't do that because I, I know for a fact that I lose um, power through that because whenever I've weathered or painted the rails the paint seeps in the fish plate there and in some cases it, um, it reduces the power to the rails so I do not do that anymore the cable now gets soldered directly to the rails and that way I don't lose anything I can paint them um, uh, wet wash them um, whatever I want to do and I know that I'll not lose any power at all so that's what I do with the dropper wires and here we are it's Wednesday evening um, all the dropper wires um, have been connected to the buzz bar um, so it won't be long before we'll start having trains running through uh, this point towards the MPD um, but we've still got uh, a fair bit of work left to do there's a PM2 switch to go in here for the point and we've got to connect it up back at the control panel um, as it was not never planned for to do this this is just a, an extra um, piece of track work just to make the layout more interesting to run I think but um, yeah we'll soon find out in coming videos um, yeah so we still got a fair bit to do um, as some of you know, um, Wednesday is normally my cut-off point. Um, Thursday is when I do my editing, ready for the Friday viewing. So it'll be interesting to see how much I get done tonight. Will it be enough to actually see some trains running? So, we should... right, so we finished fitting the PM2 point motor to the point. And it has a number now, it has number 85. And it's got little eye dents on there to confirm it's 85. And there's the switch wire over there at 85. Uh, these three cables run along the back end of the control panel, out through this hole here. And then it follows the layout underneath, of course right away along, all the way along to that uh, just in front of that signal box back there so the <laughs> it took quite a bit of time to do that run that cable in as you can imagine and um, yep yeah, so this is the nerve center the heartbeat of the northeastern um, it's very rarely you actually see this and there it is there the sprung loaded switch number 85 um, as you can see there's loads of other switches 
that need doing as well. Point number 51 all the way up to 69 has not been done yet. So there's still a few more cables to come into this control panel. Uh, yep, so I thought I'd uh, show you this. Might not be of interest, but uh, so this is it, this is where it all happens. This is the nerve center. 85 is now alive, so we'll just test it. As you can hear, it's it's working. Now we just have to test the track work with the locomotive. Before we run any locomotives, I just want to give the track a little bit of a clean, especially if we're up in soldering the cables to the rails. Uh, just to make sure there's no oily residue or any dust or anything like that because I've been doing a bit of drilling around here as well. Nice, we're almost ready. what's going to come out of the sheds. Okay, that was a pretty good test. Uh, there was just did a little bit of a knock here. Just wonder what that is. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of, bit of dirt in there, so I'll get the hoover around there. And then we'll give it another try. And now for test two. Right, so I'm happy with that. The point works and there's no problems with the track. Right, so that's a big achievement this week. Installing three new points and siding and connecting the, um, what I call the run around loop back up again and getting it up and running for future running session videos. And what I do like is that positioning of the signal box um, because not only can you see down into Tyne Dock Station, he can also see anything coming out of the MPD. If we just turn the camera around, if I do that, so you can see anything coming from the MPD and anything coming around from. New hustle itself. So yeah, there's still a lot more to do. It's not quite finished yet. There's still the ballasting to do, the painting of the rails, and finishing off the signal box area. Although it's got its concrete stand, it still 
need some cobblestones put in there because the steps are off the ground. So there's still more left to do. So it's a bit of a, a, a mishmash video as you would call it because there's lots of various bits being done but the main thing is we've got trains running again. Right, I think that's all from me this week. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and um, we'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Bye.